often reminisce over the long summer days I'd spend with my friends. Laredo didn't offer much for a teenager back then, but my friends and I always figured there was an adventure to be had. Our curiosity always seemed to gravitate towards bringing about a brush with something paranormal. We were obsessed with the TV shows, depicting ghost hunters and mediums, all somehow able to connect with the unknown. We wanted this for ourselves. Well, at least we thought we did. It was a day like any other. I had been spending a few days staying over at Nick's house. My parents always looked forward to having me out of the house for a few days, and they would gladly send me off with a couple of bucks for some food and some days worth of clothes. Nick's room was a great spot to hang out. He had a computer, an Xbox, a bunch of sketchbooks, and a guitar. Neither one of us knew how to play guitar, but we somehow always end up messing with it. Is anyone here? I asked. Nah, my parents are across and my uncle's working, Nick replied. Cool. I placed Nick's Xbox control down and quickly stepped up towards the guitar. It was placed on a stand and atop the next guitar was a black suede fedora. Nick had always asked me to stop messing with this hat, but I'd always wear it whenever I was going to play his guitar. The phone rings just as I'm about to hit the first strum. Yo dude, it's your girl, answer it. Put the hat and guitar back, I'ma take a shit said Nick, passing me his house phone. I quickly answered the phone as I placed the guitar back on its stand. The hat was placed atop the neck. Hey, I was wondering when you'd call. I made my way out of Nick's room and towards the kitchen. Just as I was in the middle of the conversation, something odd happened. The door had shut behind me as I exited Nick's room on its own. There was a stutter in my step as I made a double take towards the doorway. I was silent as I began to feel an uneasiness take me over. Something was wrong. I couldn't quite place my finger on it, but there was a thickness in the air. A sudden and ominous weight began to creep over me. As much as I tried to lose myself in conversation, something was occupying my mind and I couldn't shake the feeling anymore. I decided to make my way back to Nick's room. Yo, you almost done? I gotta pee! I yelled through the bathroom door. You're gonna have to wait, bro. I'm gonna take my sweet ass time. Man, come on. I turn around, phone still up to my head, and make my way back to Nick's room. I get back to the doorway, and the door won't budge. The anxiety peaking at this point, I say, Hey, I'll call you back, and place the phone down. I began to lean my shoulder into the door. Beads of nervous sweat begin to collect above my brow. Yo, why won't this door budge? I mutter under my breath. I step back. I hear creaking coming from the floorboards in the hallway behind me. I stop for a second, collect myself. There's no reason for panic, I'm good. I turn back to the door and slowly turn the knob. There's a clicking sound and the door easily opens. The room is dark, pitch black, darker than it has any right to be, but that's not what's making me uneasy. There's a presence, I am expected. My eyes make their way from right to left, scanning the room, trying to make out where everything is when they land in the corner of the room. There's a faint bit of sunlight coming in through the window, and it's catching a silhouette. It's the silhouette of a man, hunched over in the same wicker chair I was sitting in only moments ago. I hold my breath. Very slowly, I reach out towards the doorknob, ready to close the door. The man moves. He's not hunched over anymore. He's not just a silhouette now. He's looking at me. Nick? I mutter, knowing full well the man in the wicker chair is not Nick. Slowly the man begins to rise from the chair and I slam the door shut. Yo, Nick, someone's in your room. What? Get out of the restroom now, bro. Nick rushes out of the restroom. We both pause as we stare back towards his doorway. Should I check? He asks. Nah, man, I want to leave, I replied. Nick makes his way towards the door when a ferocious rattling sound comes from behind it. We leave. A few hours pass. Nick and I are getting tired of sitting out in the heat all day, hoping his parents arrive to have us feel safe again. You want to head inside? He asks. I can grab my keys and some cash and we'll dip. Yeah, alright. Sounds like a good idea. Inside, I begin to describe the figure in as much detail as I could. There wasn't much about the face eyes or skin that I could tell in the light, only the attire of the position. He was wearing a suit, man, it seemed. It it looked like a black suit and he had a hat on his head. It it was kind of crooked. 
I explain. A hat? Like, what kind of hat? Nick asks. A hat like, um, a hat like yours, a fedora. Nick looks past me towards his guitar stand. His face begins to look concerned. I saw you put that hat back when I passed you the phone. Where is it? We both turn towards a wicker chair in the corner of the room. Hanging off the side of the chair rests a black suede fedora.